Welcome to the video where I'm going to show you how I create those watercolor type images from photographs. Now, this is not my method completely. I learned it from a, a lady by the name of Sherrod Shepard. I took an online class back in maybe 2010, 2011 and she gave me different techniques to use in the class. And I took those and then added a few of my own to come up with uh, how I do it. Now, the other thing is I haven't done one of these in several years, partially because of, of uh, it just hasn't been spring training because of COVID and lockouts and everything else. I just haven't gone in several years. So I don't really have any new images for sports. So we're gonna use this one from Aaron Judge from 2017 I believe this was shot with a Nikon D750 and a 300 PF f4 lens the Fresno lens so I've already made the adjustments as to how I wanted the color to look a little bit let's open it up the other thing is I think they've probably changed some brushes in Photoshop so I may end up having to use different brushes than I've used in the past all right, so we have our background layer. The first thing we want to do is duplicate the layer and rename it, desaturate it, so that we have two layers. We have our background and we have our desaturated. And we want to highlight this and go to image adjustment. And lo and behold, we want to desaturate it, right? Take the color out of it. Now, the next thing we want to do is duplicate that layer and call it inverted. So now we have our background, our desaturated, and our inverted layers. And of course, we want to go to image adjustments and invert it so it should look like if you used to shoot film it should look like a negative and we want to change our blending mode to color dodge so that your screen should be blank you may have some black lines on yours that just means you um, your blacks obviously are a little too much in your image but it's okay you can get past it if it's there it's there and on your inverted layer you want to go to filter blur Gaussian blur and now your image will come back again you take your radius and move it around so that you can see it a little bit but not too much I tend to stay somewhere between four and five so we're going to use four and a half for this particular one you want thin lines but you don't want them too heavy now on your inverted you want to go back to your filters and now you want to sharpen it again unsharp mask again you move your your numbers around I typically stay somewhere between 40 and 50 and my radius somewhere between 1 and 2 you don't want to over sharpen it there we go then on this inverted layer we want to merge it down we don't want to merge all visible we want to merge it down to the desaturated layer so that we now only have our background and our desaturated layer again. Next thing we want to do is add a levels layer and you want to bring bring it into focus a little bit more Again, you don't want to overdo it. You can always go back and change that again later. 
Okay, so we have that. Now, if you haven't done it already, you probably want to go and save this so that you can always get back to where you were. You don't have to completely start over because pretty soon we're going to start painting and things like that. And if you goof up really bad and you just want to get back to this part, you can get back to it easy enough. So you want to probably save it at this point if you haven't already. Then we want to go back to our desaturated layer. And have a reveal all layer mask on top of it. Then we want to paint. Make sure you're in your desaturated layer mask. Pick a brush. Pick a low opacity level to start. 4%. And you start to paint everything back in. Obviously, whatever your subject is, you want that darker than the other areas. The trick is to constantly change the size of your brush and your opacity. And that's how you'll get your effect of more of a A painting as opposed to the photograph at least the first step of it but if you use different brushes at different opacities you'll be able to get those different effects You want to darken in the areas around your subject more so than other areas. Years ago when I was doing this a lot, uh, there was a nice chalk brush that I haven't been able to find yet. In this newer version of Photoshop, they must have one somewhere. There's a chalk one. whatever reason I liked the chalk effect okay so we're done the painting part so we probably want to save it again now the other thing we can do is go back to this levels And we can always change that again if we want to. And then, of course, later on we can go dodge and burn and things like that if we want. All right. Well, now we can save it. Okay, so this is where your personal artistic ability or preference, whatever you want to call it, takes over a little bit. You create a new layer. Call it paint. You want it on its own layer because you want to be able to get rid of things if you want to get rid of things. If it really turns out that you don't like what you've done, rather than you can obviously go back in your history and delete things or you can paint, paint in and go from there. So you pick your brush, pick a color, Pick a low capac uh, opacity, especially to start out. And you just add some color. There's no right way or wrong way. It's what you want. But you want to keep changing your colors. 
changing your brushes. This is why I said earlier, each one is unique because you, you'd never be able to remember how you did this and go back and copy it verbatim. It would just be too hard. Again, you pick the colors you want, where you want to place them. Seems to me this might be a good spot for maybe a little bit of yellow right here. maybe too much so that's why I say when you get up to the opacity make it too much but you find the brushes that you want find the effect you want to put on it change your colors And so you really just have to play around with it until you find what you really want. Sometimes I had a tendency to overdo the colors. You probably don't want to do that. You just want to add a little bit. And that's the next step. Now the next thing we want to do is crop it and I looked around I didn't really like the 16 by 9 crop on this and so I decided because you want some of that dug out so it keeps context as to where you are I don't really know I want him right in the center but I also Maybe one home plate. I don't know. Don't know if it's more important to have that crop or have home plate and be more centered. What do you think? I tend to think this is a little bit better. I think we're going to go with that. We have a little bit more. I think right about there, maybe 12 by eight and a half. And let's crop it. The next step would be to flatten it. After we've flattened it, I wanna put just a slight watercolor effect on it. However, I found for some reason in this new version of Photoshop, I don't know if you know a way around it, let me know. In order to get to the gallery that I want, up in the filter section I have to go to 8 bits and you put a little bit of a watercolor effect on obviously that's too much so we want to fade it I don't know that I like any more than maybe 15 percent I think that's about it The last step that I do, which you're going to have to get on your own now, I found these a long time ago in a magazine that had them in it. Uh, it came with a disc and they came with different borders. What you have to do is find the size of this. Forty-five ninety-one, 
and 32.52. Adjust this to a little bit more. Maybe 4,700 by 3,500 maybe. To start out, see what we get. And then we want to paste it into here and we want to lighten and screen usually seem to be the two better ones. But it seems to me if I remember right, lighten or screen. Let's go with screen. See what that looks like. That's not too bad. The last step would be if you want to dodge or burn or make any other adjustments. Uh, you want first off you want to flatten this. And you also want to make sure that you rename it so that you don't write over your borders ruin that file that's how you do it that's how you create a watercolor if <clears throat> people show a lot of interest I'll maybe do another one with a portrait or landscape or something like that but you just do the same steps every time and of course what brushes you use and how you paint them in obviously makes a big effect and also what you paint in here and what you don't paint in you can always go back and add more you know you can always layer new layer you know if you find you want some more you can always go in and add more later on you keep tweaking it once you've seen your final again it's all personal preferences to what you want to do. I hope you enjoyed it and thanks for sticking around for the whole video. Until next time, take care.